Okay, here's a statement before a question. He says, I've been looking at businesses on buy, biz, buy, sell, and notice some businesses are selling without the inventory and would have to be bought separately, meaning the inventory. Is this common? And the answer is no, it's not common. If the inventory is not part of the sale of the business, how can you evaluate the business? First of all, you can't, okay? And I'll tell you why you can't. If the, if the, inf if the inventory does not either come with the business or if when you add the inventory costs to what they're asking for the business, that it doesn't make sense, simply pass on the deal, okay? And the reason is, if the inventory is not going to be sold to you, you are not buying a going business. You're buying a startup. Why? Because you can't be in business without the inventory to sell, and you've got to have inventory to sell on the day you take over the business. Otherwise, you don't, you're out of business, right, until you get more inventory. So if you have to go get more inventory produced or you have to buy it from a source, it's going to take 30 to 60 days to deliver it to you. That's a, a period of time. You're not in business. What are your customers of that business doing? They're not going to sit around and wait 60 days to get their product. So they're going to go elsewhere for it and you've lost them as customers. So all of the goodwill of a business literally disappears if it doesn't come with the inventory because it means you're out of business till you replace it. Okay, so don't even think about buying a company without its inventory because you're literally buying a startup. And, and all the goodwill value that they're trying to charge you for is lost because they're showing you how much money they've earned in the past with the business. And they're saying, well, you buy this business, you're going to earn that income, right? And you're saying, well, yeah, so if I'm going to earn the income, then I can pay some multiple of that income as goodwill value for the business because then I earn that money and I earn this profit. You can't do it if it doesn't come with the inventory. So hopefully that part is really clear. If the company has no assets but has cash flow, is it still a deal to go after? And here they refer to perhaps a janitorial commercial cleaning company, for example. So here's what they're telling you, okay, that the business has cash flow because there's a guy who sits in a closet and he takes orders for janitorial supplies or commercial cleaning, and then he outsources it to somebody else. And the whole activity is done on the phone because the business has no assets. Even there, I assume he's applying that it's a home business, right? So when you buy the business, you don't need any assets because you're going to have your own desk, your own chair, your own phone, your own internet connection, all of the stuff you need to do the business. But now you're going to do it at a closet in your house, right? So if a business has no assets, but has cash flow. That's not a good business to go after because basically what you're buying is not a business, it's a job, right? As long as you're in the, your closet doing your job, the business will bring in money, but then you're a slave to the business. Cause if you go on vacation, there's nobody there to do it for you. If there was somebody there to do it for you, you'd have to have assets for that person to do it for you. So it makes no sense to look at a business that has no assets, but has cash flow, but the cash flow is being generated really by the owner. And yes, it comes under the category of a janitorial commercial cleaning company, but it's all outsourced and it only produces income as long as you're working. Okay. That's called a job. All right. And maybe it's a good income job, but it's still a job. And when you go to sell it, you're going to have the same problem selling it because you got to find somebody else who's going to buy the job. Okay. And you have no leverage there. Okay. You can't grow the business. It's not scalable. All right. So you can't I say, maybe I can hire somebody, but in order to hire somebody, you got to have capital. You got to have cash. Anything you do to grow a business requires capital to grow it. That's why businesses are part of this thing called capitalism is you don't get to earn money in a business for free. Okay. Somebody had to put capital into it for it to grow. And capital means it has to have assets, right? Doesn't have assets that can't grow. In fact, one of the most important ratios of any business is called this asset to sales ratio. And what that's telling you in any given industry, how much assets or in effect capital you have to have in the business in order to achieve a certain sales size. So the bigger the business, the more assets it'll have based on the capital to uh, or assets to sales ratio. So that's how people know how much cash or capital in a given industry has to be in a business. And by the way, that's another use of what are called RMA annual statement studies, where the, the uh, risk management associates group produces for every sick code in the United States, every NAA any code in the United States, a relationship between that industry and their financial statements. In other words, different industries have different sales to assets ratios. 
okay, and in different industries require different amounts of capital to grow the business to a different certain size. I'm probably giving you more information than you asked for here, but the important point that I'm trying to get to here is you can't buy a business without its inventory. This inventory doesn't come with it. And if the price of the inventory doesn't fit well in the price of the total company so that you can make money on your, based on the amount of purchase price that you're having to come up with, then it's not a good business for you to buy. You can't buy it without its inventory because then you're out of business. There you buy it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense.